Father in heaven, we're thankful today for your many blessings and for this opportunity to study your words and to be revived and reformed. We thank you for victory over sin because this is your promise. Save us, we pray, and use us to give others an opportunity to be saved at last. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, friends. Welcome one. Welcome all to this midday power surge. Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. Friends, I want to get right into this message because we can see very, very clearly the second coming of Jesus Christ is even at the doors. The close of human probation is about to take place and I want to be found ready. Do you want to be found ready? We should all have a desire to make sure others get the opportunity to be saved before it is too late. We are told that just before the second coming of Jesus, the mark of the beast will be enforced. That's Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through verse 16. And Revelation chapter 13 tells us the role the climate crisis is going to play to usher in the mark of the beast, which is Sunday rest enforced by law with persecution for God's commandment keeping people. Fire, calamities, then comes the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, verse 13 through verse 17. Now we are all familiar with what's happening in Madrid, Spain. December 2nd, 2019. The leader, UN chief, is saying the planet has reached a point of no return. We are in a crisis, they say. And the EU leaders are also saying to combat climate change is their top priority. That's clear, friends. And since that is their top priority, and they're all in league forming a synergy with the papacy, that means Sunday observance by law is their top priority because Pope Francis says in Laudato Si, Sunday must be enforced in order to combat calamity. Why is the Pope angry? Why is he wroth? Headline, Pope vents frustration over lack of political will to implement the policies of Laudato Si at this convention there in Madrid, Spain, December 6, 2019. Why is he frustrated? Because he wants to move rapidly to get Sunday rest observed by law. But God has set him bound. And not until God says it's time, Sunday observance, the mark of the beast, will not be enforced. But friends, may I add, that time is drawing much closer. We are nearing home. The second coming of Christ is even at the doors. In this article, the Pope goes on to say that the young people understand Laudato Si. I wonder, what does he mean by this? Because in Laudato Si, Sunday must be observed. Sunday must be enacted as the law of the land. And who is that chief young person leading out in the climate justice movement? Is Greta Thunberg. Is she calling for nature worship? Is she calling for Sunday rest by law? What does the Pope mean? Young people understand. Loud to see. All right, friends. I'm going to share with you now that Greta Thunberg is revealing her true colors. She has tipped her hand. Look at this here, friends. December 9th, let me segue, 2019, Democracy Now! Hundreds of thousands march in Madrid, Spain, as COP25 enters the second week. All right. September 2019, Greta Thunberg has been saying, we must listen to the scientists as she's urging Congress to take action. Listen to what she said. September 18, 2019, ABC News. As my testimony, because I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. Mm. And then, notice December 9th. Don't forget that now. 
Listen to whom? The scientists. Now in December 9th, 2019, headline, Greta Thunberg, Rose Whipple said what? We must listen to indigenous people amid climate crisis. All right. Take a listen. This is December 9, 2019. Yeah. It is so incredibly important that we listen to to indigenous people because... Hmm. Listen to whom? Indigenous people. Now, what do the indigenous people worship? They worship nature. And what is the chief god of nature? It is the sun. Greta Thunberg, listen to the scientists. Greta Thunberg, listen to the indigenous people. They worship nature. Nature worship is linked to sun worship. And from Sunday worship, you have the derivative Sunday worship. Constantine, a nature worshiper. Listen to this. Friend. And Constantine enforced Sunday as the day of rest in 321 AD. Roman Catholicism, nature worshipers. Paganism, spiritualism, sun worship, Sunday worship. Indigenous people, what are they saying? Take a look. This is Reuters, the same conference. Greta Thunberg, that's Rose Whipple. There she is. Right now in Spain, December 9, 2019. Rose Whipple of the, of the Santi Dakota. I believe it's Ho Chong and Winnebago descent. All right, native to Minnesota in the U.S., called for an approach based on tradition and technology. The climate crisis, she says, Rose Whipple, is a spiritual crisis for our entire world. Our solutions must weave science and spirituality and traditional ecological knowledge. What is traditional ecological knowledge to the indigenous people that's linked to spirituality they worship nature and the chief god of nature is the sun pause right there does the bible warn us of worshiping nature yes and the bible tells us that the chief god of nature is sun is the sun that's second kings chapter 23 and verse 5 come back here have you ever heard many young people and adults say we are not religious. We're simply spiritual. It says we must weave science and spirituality and traditional ecological knowledge. That's sun worship, nature worship. Take a look at this. This is the Irish Times, December 9, 2019. Rose Whipple, after seeing the climate crisis to solve it, we must weave science and spirituality and traditional ecological knowledge she goes on to say red words in the middle she described the decline of the mississippi as a sacred river that fed people for thousands of years by the way in the scriptures friends pharaoh worshipped the river nile the river and called it sacred come back here again this is nature worship friends and nature worship is connected to sun worship. Look at this statement. So what is Greta Thunberg calling for? Nature worship, sun worship. And who did she meet with at the Vatican? The Pope of Rome, wherein she said, Pope Francis told me to continue the climate justice movement. Take a look at this now, friends. The Great Controversy, page 583 says, thousands deify nature why they deny the god of nature pause right there write this scripture down romans chapter 1 verse 20 onward the bible tells us that nature worship is linked to false worship sun worship it's also linked to the false marriage same-sex union the lgbt lifestyle come back thousands defy nature while they deny the God of nature, though in a different form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today as verily as it existed among ancient Israel in the days of Elijah. 
the God of many professedly wise men, is little better than Baal, the sun god. Baal, the sun god of Phoenicia. That's 2 Kings 23. And verse 5, let's come back, red words, the God of many professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, politicians, journalists, the God of polished fashionable circles, of many colleges and universities. These are young people. Even of some theological institutions is little better than Baal again, the sun God. All right, friends. And remember, where was Pope Francis? What was he holding? What conference? What synod? In the month of October, the Amazon Synod to combat climate change. And he was promoting the lifestyle and the spiritual practices of the indigenous people. And what did the Pope say? That they need Sunday Eucharist. There it is, my friends. The Sunday Eucharist, Sunday, sun worship, nature worship, for the indigenous people. And then the Pope went on to say, the policies from the Amazon Synod must go to the world. And don't forget the Pachamama, the Pachamama, that whole crisis, the Pachamama, that idol that was brought to the Vatican. Ah, oh, friends, it's nature worship, sun worship, the indigenous people. And notice, so now when we look at Laudato Si, paragraph 237, what is the Pope calling for? Sunder rest by law. That means Laudato Si is nature worship. It's paganism. It's spiritualism. And who is the progenitor of that name Francis? The Pope has taken. It's Francis of Assisi. There it is, and it's nature worship, sun worship, brother sun, sister moon. It's dear friends. And look at this. This is Francis of Assisi. Praise be the very name of allowed that to see the encyclical. It's nature worship. Again, Constantine, sun worshiper, nature worshiper. Constantine enforced the first global Sunday law in the Roman Empire, 321 AD. So what is Greta Thunberg calling for? Listen to the scientists, she said, and is saying, and who else? Listen to the indigenous people, the nature worshippers. This is Sunday rest by law. We are nearing home. What are your thoughts in the forum? All right, friends. Then she went on to say October 7, 2019. AP News, Greta Thunberg, she says, Indigenous peoples have been leading this fight for climate justice for centuries. They have taken care of the planet and they have lived, don't forget this, they have lived in balance with nature. And we need to make sure that their voices are being heard. We need to listen to them because they have knowledge that is valuable right now. What is she saying here, friends? We must listen to the indigenous people because they have lived in balance with nature. And since nature is unbalanced, out of balance, who must we listen to? The indigenous people. They have a secret. They have a formula. They have the spirituality to bring nature back in balance, in harmony, to bring peace. Does it make sense, friends? To save the climate, to save the earth, to save the atmosphere. And what do they worship? Nature, the sun. Does it make sense, the chief God? And this brought my mind back to 1 Kings 18. The prophets of Baal, nature worshippers. Listen what she goes on to say now. December 9th, 2019. She's right there now in Madrid, Spain. Listen what she said. Yeah. It is so incredibly important that we listen to to indigenous people because... Hmm. Take a listen again. Why must we listen to them, Greta Thunberg? Um, and also, they have been living in balance with nature for, for hundreds of years. 
so we have, I think, we need to listen to them because they have valuable knowledge we, we need in this, in this crucial time of crisis. Oh, my friends, can you see that we are nearing home? So when the Pope said, young people understand loud that to see to their hearts, you can see it, friends. Greta Thunberg has tipped her hand. Greta Thunberg is revealing her true colors. My friends, I know for certainty this generation will see the enforcement of the mark of the beast. Am I ready? Are you ready? This generation, we will see the second coming of Jesus. We are nearing home. Uh, what are your thoughts in the forum, friends? Question, what can I share with you now to get ready? Go to Joel, take your Bibles, take your writing instruments, take your notepad, Joel chapter 2. And Joel chapter 1, rather, and look with me at verse 14, verse 15. The Bible tells us in verse 15, Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. We are nearing home. And as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. So what am I to do? What are you to do, save to serve international and first-time viewers? What are we to do? Verse 14, sanctify a fast. What is a fast? Abstaining from food and drink for a season with much prayer and reading God's word. That's the fast. What's the true fast? Abstaining from sin, victory over sin. What's the true fast? Being temperate in all things. My prayer is, dear God, give me consistency. What is your prayer, friends? It says, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders. But what if the elders of my church are in apostasy? What are we to do? It's an individual, personal work. That's why we are told in selected messages, book one, page 122, are we hoping to see the, to see the whole church revived? Are we hoping to see the whole church revive? That time will never come. This is an individual work, my friends. Does that make sense? And the Bible tells us now in verse number 14 what we are to do. The last phrase, it says we are to cry unto our Lord. What must I cry and say? What must you cry and say? By the way, people who experience pain cry are we going through physical pain spiritual pain emotional pain what must we cry and say don't guess don't conjecture joel chapter 2 and verse number 15 verse 17 verse 17 says we must cry spear me O god Spear my husband, O oh God. Spear my wife, my spouse, O oh God. Spear my children, O oh, spear my siblings. Spear. And what will God do if we cry in sincerity? Verse 18, he will hear and he will pity us. What a God we serve. What a loving God. So will we cry today? And Psalm 55 verse 17 says, Evening morning and at noon will i pray and cry that's the word and cry aloud and he will hear my voice it's midday power surge and the bible now tells us in verse watch joel chapter one and the bible tells us now in verse number 14 dealing with sanctifying a fast Verse 15, when the second coming of Christ is near, verse 16 says, is not the meat cut off before your eyes? What comes to your mind? In a time when the second coming of Christ is near, the Bible tells us the meat is cut off. The meat is cut off. What scripture comes to mind? It's a previous miniseries. It's Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. Through verse 51, the wise and faithful servant is giving meat in due season. Meat in the last days. But Joel chapter 1 says just before the second coming of Christ, the meat is cut off. Oh friends, I want this meat. I don't want this meat to be cut off. What is your prayer request? Save to serve international. Do you want this meat? Well, 
What does this meat comprise? Joah chapter 1, verse number 10 tells us the meat entails corn, wine, and oil. Put that down. Corn, wine, and oil. I'll leave the corn for last. What is the wine a symbol of? Just before Christ was crucified, what was he serving the disciples? The grape juice, a symbol of his shed blood. Wine, blood. Genesis 49, verse 11. Wine is blood, symbolically. That's it, blood. And the blood typifies life. Luke chapter 17. Not Luke, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. So what must we receive, my friends, when we cry unto God? What is the meat? The life of Christ. Victory over sin. Revelation chapter 7, verse 13. Verse 14, it's victory over sin. All right. What about the oil? The oil represents, my friends, the anointing of the Spirit of God. That's First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 13 i want the anointing do you want the anointing and this is what christ is promising offering lukewarm laodiceans of revelation chapter 3 verse 16 through verse 18 to anoint that's the key word thine eyes with eye salve and joe chapter 1 verse 16 says is not the meat cut off before your eyes to anoint your eyes, the oil, with heavenly eye salve. Does that make sense, friends? Now let's close. What is the corn? The corn represents manna. Angels full. Write down Psalm 78, verse 23 through verse 25. That's the corn. But friends, I ask God, take me beyond the mere symbol. What is the corn? The corn is an experience. Go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 4, look with me, Mark chapter 4, and look with me at verse number 26. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 says, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the, into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring, and grow up, he knoweth not how. Not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, then the what? The full corn in the ear. And then the Bible says in verse 29, once the fruit is brought forth, the sickle is immediately brought in to reap the harvest. That's Revelation 14, the sickle. Verse 14 through verse 16. So all of us need the corn the meat before the Sunday law crisis. Revelation 14, for the sickle to be brought in. First the blade, the first step. Then comes the ear, the second step. Then the full corn in the ear. Blade, justification. The ear, sanctification. The full corn, that is perfection. That's glorification. We are almost home, friends. Take a listen. As my wife sing the song to the Lord, it blessed my heart, may it also bless your heart, my friends. We know not the hour of the Master's appearing, yet signs all foretell that the moment is nearing. When he shall return, tis the promise most cheering, but we know not the hour. We'll watch and we'll pray with our lamps trimmed and burning. We'll work and we'll wait till the master's returning. We'll sing and rejoice, every omen is earning, but we know not the hour. He will come, let us watch and be ready, he will come. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory. But we know not the hour.